power of the sun. Today I'm gonna to show you my super simple solar panel system on my boat. Something you can easily replicate on your boat or RV or even if you want a home project uh, just to make a small solar uh, panel installation. I wanna show you the components I've used as well as uh, how it works. It should be very quick here because it's really nothing to it. I, I was intimidated a bit by the solar, the idea of solar panels, how's it work? At first, did a little research online, on YouTube, and then I realized there's really nothing to it. There's panels, wiring, a charge controller, and your batteries, and that's essentially it. So even though it's a little cloudy today, I think it's a good opportunity to show you this solar panel system that I have. Let's do it. Okay, that's better. So before I get started on talking to you about my panels and the installation, I'll just give you a quick diagram of what a solar panel system is. You first have your panels. You then have to connect those panels to a charge controller. A charge controller is what, well, it controls the output uh, into your batteries. It's as simple as that. And then of course you have your batteries charge those batteries and then those batteries are going to work off your normal electrical system on your boat or RV or whatever. It's that simple. So let's talk about the first piece of the system. The panel. So these are from Amazon. I think they're the brand is Renalgy and they're about $125 each and that's for 100 watts. As I said I have two of those so that's 200 watts total. That's a fairly small amount, but it's really all I could do for the space that I had. Now, I researched whether I could do, you know, a bimini cover, which is this cover right here, and put panels on top of that. That would have been probably a more ideal situation. But the bimini top idea was going to be pretty expensive. Now, before I go forward, I think in order to best explain the installation, I should jump back and forth between here in the Bahamas and Annapolis, Maryland, where I first installed the panels. Let's now jump back to Annapolis. Now, the challenge with this boat was that there was really nowhere to put the, the panels. I was thinking, you know, potentially on top of the Dodger here, but for one, it's too small and there's not a really great support. The other idea, which I've seen on some other boats, was if you had if you had the lifelines being the uh, solid stainless steel lifelines, you could put it sideways like this. And that I think would have been the best option. But I did not do that. I used what I had, which most boats have these back, well, these sailboats have these back rails. I'll show you on this side. We have, and I'll show you kind of underneath was to put it perpendicular up on here using these clamps. The clamps are listed on Amazon. You can also find them at most marine stores. And then I put on this piece of wood, I used some pretty intense uh, fasteners. I got this aluminum plate. I drilled through it, put it on there, drilled the hole through this, put a, a wooden piece a one by four that is a treated piece of lumber, uh, treated for outdoor use. And I also put a layer of um, epoxy resin on there and then I also painted it with a white primer paint. So I'm going to drill it through here and attach it. You can see on this other side where I've already installed the bolts. And I installed that, the same goes for out there. And I found this swivel that you can put through the Bimini attachment piece. And it makes it nice because when you go up and down, it gives it a little bit of play to go with. Now, now my favorite part of this system and what I think makes it a, uh, a good system is actually this pole that I found. It is, actually it says it right here on it. 
the strongest easy to use telescoping handle made. It's like an, a marine grade aluminum telescoping broom handle that we've modified and put these uh, bimini pieces in. So Josh bought these uh, little connectors. Um, they connect to the post right down here. Um, unfortunately this one didn't quite fit so we just had to shave a bit off of the end using a box cutter. Um, but it slides in there um, and uh, we just used a screw and a, or a bolt and a nut, a nylon self-locking nut to uh, connect it right to the pole. And then we did the same thing on the other side but also this side didn't quite fit because it was a bit smaller because it's a sliding contraption. So we once again just shaved a bit off and sanded it down so it would fit in the other end. It's just a handle and it has three different um, positions, right? Here's how it works. You, you loosen these little pieces that I showed you. Just a little, just a couple turns to loosen them. Then you got this little clamp piece in the middle. You raise it to that angle. When the sun's coming from that direction, it just locks right into place like that. So if you have the sun on this side over here, Bam, you got your power. When it's straight overhead, that direction. This is the middle setting right here. If it were coming from behind me, I can then lower it to right there. Right there. And then you got a little bit of an angle coming from that way. You simply tighten these back up and you're good to go. Pretty spiffy. This will give me an opportunity to show you a couple other things. So, this particular brand, like I said, here's a little readout here. Uh, operating current is 6.25 amps. So, so you got over 12 amps of charging power if both panels are getting full sun. Now, you're not always getting full sun, obviously. I'm probably averaging eight or nine amps of charging power in pretty pretty much full sun. Whenever there's a cloud behind it, it goes down to like six or whatever. So let's go below deck and I'll show you the system in place there, which includes, uh, well for, first up here, I'll show you what I did with the wiring. Um, I took wires here, you have to get these particular clamps, they're called MK2 or something these MC4 connectors. Then I bought this wiring through Amazon. This, this wiring is uh, specific for solar panels and it's the double wiring within the same casing so I like that. It goes, uh, this is 10 gauge wire and I found these holes that were already in the back of this boat. I'll show you. So it goes through there, and it goes under here. You got a bunch of storage in there, but you can actually see the wiring goes from there, down there, it goes in there, and then it goes into the engine room, which is what I'll show you next. Let me grab my trusty spotlight so I can show you where the wires are going. Pardon the mess, this is kind of my storage room. But we'll go back into the engine compartment and we're gonna see uh, several wires back here. And what I've done is you can see, all right, you can see this wire here is the wire that we're looking at and I've got it going under this. Those wires there go behind, go into that engine compartment, they go under this bed. So the two different panels are coming from there, under there, into here. I've got them spliced together and then one from the splice comes into this charge controller here and now I'll, sh I'll just show you the charge controller. And this is a uh, Renalgy, Renalgy, I guess is how you pronounce it. 
And right now you can see that the batteries are at 12.4. Uh, the solar panel is feeding the battery. Other uh, numbers you get here, you're getting a charge of six amps right now. It's actually a little cloudy outside. Now this is a 20 amp MPPT charge controller. Now there's also what they call a PWM so it focuses a uh, charge controller that you can get on like Amazon or eBay for like 10 bucks. The MPPT is supposed to be better. I don't know all of why and everything on the specifications is why, but it's supposed to be better. That's what I got. It's a little more expensive. This was about $100. So then you've got an in and out down here. One is coming in to the charge controller. The other one is going out to the battery battery compartments. There's four house batteries back there as well as a starter battery on that side. And that's giving it the charge. It's that simple, literally. Um, so there you have it. That's a super simple solar system for your boat or RV. I get, uh, you know, I get sufficient power of that to charge every day. Now, if I'm on anchor for say three or four days straight and I have not run the engine, I do have some issues depending on what I'm charging, what kind of power I'm using. The main things that consume power on my boat are the refrigerator is probably number one. And number two is the charging station I have to charge all the stuff like cameras, phones, just different things that I have just for the conveniences on the boat. Kind of the electronic station, if you will, that uses a lot of power for charging, but even with that, these solar panels really recharge during the day and it gets it pretty much full, um, gets the batteries good to go by, by the evening. And I do run down, I can see the voltage meter going down throughout the night, uh, but then it comes right back uh, in the morning and starts going uh, up again. Now, I don't have a generator on the boat. A lot of people have generators, I don't. I only have these solar panels. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Obviously, I'm using some fuel if I have to turn on the engine for a half hour to an hour, but it's not much fuel at all. And I've been very happy with this setup. And also, just to give you a, you know, how, how strong these things are, these poles, I have, you know, I've been in 35 knots of wind with these panels. You know, they flap a little bit like this, but there's no damage whatsoever that's been done. Um, I've even used the pole sometimes when I come in on the dinghy you know, sometimes I have to grab a hold of it um, when I'm coming in and there has been no damage to the pole. So I'm very happy with the uh, solar system as is. So uh, any questions, feel free to comment below and ask me. I'll try to answer the best I can. I'm not an expert. I simply wanted a simple solution to charge my batteries and I think I found it without having to spend a bunch of money. Uh, I think the whole system itself cost me, let's see, the panels. 125 each that's two that's going to be 250 for the total on two panels the poles i think cost me 15 to 20 dollars each let's say 40 dollars for two poles uh some of the little hardware to put it all together probably 20 dollars for both so now where are we we're at 250 plus 40 is 290 plus 20 that's 310 the wiring cost me probably 30 or 40 dollars um so now where are we that's gonna be 350 we're up to 350 the charge controller was a, was a little bit of a pricey item at uh, like $120. So now where are we? Uh, now I've already lost the math here. Uh, I said it's pretty much on the cheap end when you talk about any kind of solar panel installation system. Uh, the other thing people are going to ask, you know, oh, did you do, did you run them in parallel uh, or what was it? Par parallel or in series? I I don't even know what you know. I, I've researched that, and uh, that's a whole other discussion, what the differences are. You can research that. But I did this in parallel, meaning that I just simply took the uh, negative from each panel. I connected those together. I then took the positive from each panel, connected those together, and then I ran them to the positive and negative on the charge controller. Simple. All right, that about does it. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, like, send me a comment about what else you'd like to see. You can't beat it here in the Bahamas. Look at this water. Simply incredible. All right.
We'll see you next time. Uh, now I've already lost the math here. Um, 250 for the panels, 40 for the poles, 40 more for the wiring. That's gonna be my super simple solar panel system on my boat. Something that I can probably tell you about in three to four minutes because it is that simple. So you have to get these particular connectors which are called, God, this you can't even see my face because it's so up. $30. Hardware to put the stuff together, probably $40, let's see.